Welcome back to the Name Redacted Podcast, America's most beloved podcast, the most downloaded Red Sox podcast in the world. Jake's here. Pete Blackburn is here. And we got Tyler Milliken of 98.5 The Sports Hub. Um, Zolak and Bertrand is the show that you're associate producer for. Yes. Correct? Yeah. Shout out yep. to those guys. Uh, shout out to 98.5 The Motherfucking Sports Hub. Uh, specifically Zolak and Bertrand, the show, the midday show over there at 98.5. They're crushing it over there. And trust me, I love 98.5 The Sports Hub. I actually just got back from 98.5 The Sports Hub. You can catch me every Wednesday from 6 to 7 on 98.5 The Sports Hub with Tony Maz on the baseball hour. Again, that is The Sports Hub, 98.5 FM on your radio. You can catch me right there because um, I just want to promote that. I just want to promote that because I'm a sports hub guy. I've been a sports hub guy since uh, 2015. Little background, just just off the top, just off the top. This is just a random thought that I had. Uh, 98.5 The Sports Hub brought me in. Uh, it was actually, it was Zolak and Bertrand that brought me in. It was Zolak and Bertrand that brought me in, in in 2015 because I went to their competitor across the street. I won't even say their name. I'm so loyal to the sports hub. I won't even say their Thank name. Thank you. Yeah. So in 2015, I I I covered. For I will. W e i. All right. All right. That's <laughs> uncalled for. Yeah, as wild. I, I I we'll get to it. We'll get but to it. I'm I'm not a 98 by the guy. Yeah. Uh. So I got I got W e i their first interview with David Price right after he signed with the Red Sox. Never heard anything back. No thank you. No nothing. So I was like, all right, whatever. Started a desk job. And uh, I used to listen to audiobooks. And if I wasn't listening to audiobooks, I, I used to listen to Zolak and Bertrand. That's what I would listen to. Great show. Love those guys. Still do. And uh, sometimes they would talk about my tweets or my blogs or something like that. They would always give me shout outs, which I very much appreciated. So on my lunch breaks, I started going out to my car and calling in the show. And then they would put me on the air and we would talk socks. Me, Beatle, Zoe, Hardy. It's a good time. The next year, they offered me a spot. Hey, why don't you come in once a week? I was like, okay, sure. I would love to. That's a tremendous opportunity. So I started doing the spot at the 98.5 of the Sports Hub, Zolak and Bertrand, 10 to 2. And uh, then the station across the street was like, hey, we heard those spots that you're doing on Zolak and Bertrand. Why don't you come do, do those over here? And you know what I said, Tyler? They offered me 3X. They offered me 3X what the Sports Hub was paying me. And I said, suck my fucking balls. I am loyal to 98.5 The Sports Hub. And uh, <clears throat> then in 2017, I moved to New York City. So I couldn't go on 98.5 The Sports Hub anymore. And it made me sad because I loved going on with Zolak and Bertrand. It was a good time. And then uh, I moved back 2020. Actually, when I was in New York, I, I did a little bit of, uh, I did some hits on Toucher and Rich because they asked me to. They called me and they were like, hey, Love to have you on. They were supportive back when we couldn't get credentials. Toucher and Rich were like, get this guy credentials. I was like, yeah. Yeah, Toucher and Rich, that's awesome. I was pumped. Nothing from Zolak and Bertrand. They never called me. Then I come back, start doing some stuff with Maz. Love Tony Maz. My guy. I have fun. That's the baseball show. It's the baseball hour. Talk baseball for an hour. It's awesome. Once a week, every Wednesday. Again, 98.5 The Sports Hub. Uh, and I enjoy it. Anytime that I've communicated with Zolak and Bertrand, it's always been because I called in because I, I'll still listen to the show from time to time. I don't not listen because I don't like it. I'm just, I'm just busier now. But when I do listen, and, they, and if they ever bring me up, I'll call in and be like, hey, what's up? And I'll come on. And every conversation since I left in 2017 has always ended with, let's do this more often. Like, I'd love to come back on. I, let's do this more often. Do they ever call? They don't. They don't. But I'll go on with Toucher and Rich. I'll go on with Maz because they asked me to and they want me to be there. It's all I can Bertram. <clears throat> it's weird because I was listening today. I was listening today. And Beatles said that I, I pick fights with them. How am I picking fights? I haven't even talked to them. They won't talk to me. It's crazy. It's actually crazy. What's crazier <laughs> is that they played audio from this podcast today and I feel like I got blamed for a lot of it none of the audio that was shared on the show was me 
It was Pete. <laughs> this is, you know what this is all over again? It's when Blake Swihart's mom started posting in the Jerry Remy Report Facebook group about how I was a monster because of things that Steve said. I was like, <laughs> wait a second. I didn't say any of this. I didn't. So they're mad at me. And, I, and you know, when he said I pick fights with them 12 times a year, uh, he's referring to the one time in the history of the world where Lou Merloni was saying how, you know, there's a lot of baseball people or not even baseball people, just Boston sports radio hosts uh, are telling people to not watch the Red Sox or discourage or shit on the Red Sox. Lou was the only guy. So I was like, all right, yeah, fuck yeah. And at the time, I wasn't getting checks from Sports Hub. I wasn't getting them from EEI either. But I still never went back to EEI. Once Zolak and Bertrand brought me, brought me over in 2015, never, never did another day for WEI. Never. But now we have this, this, this issue where it's... And I'm just speaking on me. I'm not bringing Tyler into this because I don't want to make this an awkward situation for Tyler. But Beatles saying today on his show that I don't appreciate what they did for me. Wrong. That I pick fights with the station, that I hate the station. I just came from the station, Beatle. <laughs> like, I, I drove half hour to I don't need to do that. I want to do it. I enjoy it. I love working with Tony Mass. I, let's, just, let's just say last year that both stations were interested. Where did I fucking go? Where am I right now? I conclude my, my case here. I still love Zolak and Bertrand. But I feel like there, there needs to be a hug it out moment because uh, they, they were saying some shit today that uh, I just... It's not that I disagree with it. It's just flat out incorrect. So I don't want to have... The, I don't want to put Tyler in a weird situation. Uh, can, I, can I say something? Please. I love those guys. Those are my boys. Uh, if I didn't say it last podcast, right? I treasure my spot on Zolak and Bertrand being part of that team. Jared, mm -hmm. do not play anything. Um, I'm not. I didn't. I didn't do anything. I, I know that look on your face. Um, I, I appreciate everything they've done for me. They have been so big, and not only me getting the opportunities I have today, um, but continuing to get opportunities and do different things, talking baseball. You know, before Zolak and Bertrand, there was no Tyler Milliken. It was Tyler Milliken who just posted tweets on Twitter that no one cared about. Um, so everything they've done for me and continue to do for me and will do for me um, means it. You know, Hardy, Zoe, Beetle, uh, Tom, everybody um, from day one up until today and so on. Continuing um, thankful, extremely thankful. Um, and I, I can't speak, Jared, for how we can mend you in this connection that goes way, way it just before seems me. Like a big, it seems like a big misunderstanding. I, I think to that's me. what it is. And I, I think we didn't say like, if anything, it not to burst your bubble Milliken. It, it didn't matter if you were there or not, no. because it wasn't a live show. Like it was, if it were a live show, then we would have done it on the weekend. It was a Thursday at 11 AM. Like, Pete was just hanging out in the fucking corner. Yeah. Really, all I just, it, that's all it was. Uh, like and we, at uh, no the point, only it's, Pete didn't say it. I didn't say it. Jake didn't say it. No one was like, "We fucking need Milliken here and fuck <laughs> the sports hub for not letting him do this." Like, were we sad that you couldn't be there? Yeah, because like I knew that it would have been cool for you to see how many people like listen to the podcast and appreciate you on the podcast. But at the end of the day, I'm not going to sit here and be like, "Why the fuck did they not grant you permission to be here?" I get it. That's your full-time job. This is, this is a little side thing that we do for fun. That's fine. Like, I don't know. It, it seems like a big misunderstanding, miscommunication that I don't want to spend a lot of time on either because we got to talk about a Pittsburgh Pirates series that didn't go so well for the Boston Red Sox. That's what, that's what I want to end up talking about at the end of the day. But uh, I'll just say, the, my, uh, first of all, I started my whole thing last week with Tyler. Don't want to get you in trouble here. <laughs> so the fact that the fact that there's made an awkward situation literally said I didn't want that to happen. So uh, but I will take I will take some blame that I, I potentially stirred up some shit. It's something I've been known to do. I don't have a relationship with 98.5 The Sports Hub, so I don't give a fuck about them. I love I love Beetle. We have a common common interest. We both love John Mayer. I've hung out with him several times. Uh, I've met Zoe. Seems nice enough. 
done stuff with Michael Felger. That's the extent of my relationship with 98.5 The Sports Hub. I've, I've never been on their airwaves, never done anything with them. I've done stuff across the street because they've asked me. Like you said, Jared, only one, one side asked, what are you supposed to do? So yeah, they asked me, 98.5 didn't. So I'm not, I'm not opposed to stirring up some shit with 98.5, <laughs> but I'm not I here. don't want Tyler to be in trouble. I, I don't want Tyler to be in trouble. And I'm not here to stir up shit. I just, what I, I read that situation, it was very uh, Manny Ramirez, Roger Clemens in the 2003 ALCS when Clemens threw a fastball high, but it was really nowhere near him with no intent. And then Manny just went out with the bat. Yeah. <laughs> like it felt like, like they were just looking for a reason to charge the mound on me because I didn't even fucking say anything in that clip. None of that was me. That was all Pete. <laughs> I didn't fucking say a word. So whatever. I mean, again, I'm, I'm interested to hash it out, whether if it's on their show, if they ask me to be on there for the first time in seven years, I'm happy to do it. Uh, if, if it's on this podcast, great. If it's behind closed doors, fine. I'd love to have the conversation. But to say that I pick fights with the station and that I don't appreciate the opportunity, save it. Spare me. Spare me. Spare me. Spare me. That is also over. it was it was born out of my disappointment that Tyler wasn't at the meet and greet. That's it. Like, that's it. But I, I, I know I that I said, like, they why. should give you the day I, off. But like, I understand why they wouldn't. But I was yeah. I was disappointed that that was the, the David Ortiz interview was the first time that I ever met Tyler in person. So being at that event <laughs> and not being able to meet Tyler and not being able to drink with Tyler, especially after the I missed the first event, the uh, the watch party where Tyler was a superstar. I I was upset. I was uh, I was a little I felt like I was robbed of that that experience. Yeah, that means it's OK, though. Thank yeah. you. Pete. I, I, I want I want Tyler if not if when we do a live show, I've already said this to you, Tyler, I'll do it on a weekend. I will work around your schedule so that we can have you at the live show. I'm never going to put you in a spot where you have to choose. Would it have been cool if they were cool about it? And they're like, yeah, you know what? We support you. We want you to go to the meet and greet and see all the people that love you. That's awesome. That would have been great. But because they're like, hey, we're, hey, hello over here. Sports Hub, we're your full-time job. Uh, hello. Like it's opening day. You're the baseball guy. No complaints at no point. And you can attest to this, Tyler. Was was I like, what the fuck? They won't let you? What? No, no, like, no. It, it, it was it never anything happen. like that. And like, I don't know. If, like, like we said, when we talked about it, when it's a clip, right? Things get taken one way or it's kind of cut up to, you know, communicate it as fast as possible. But, I, you know, it's above me. I, I'm not the one who can make the decision for like, you know, who comes on the show or anything like that. But I think. You know, you guys both have a long history and I'd love to see everyone on the same page because I, you know, using the parent analogy, I don't want to see my parents <laughs> fighting. I want everyone to be happy. We don't all have to live one-sided. under one home. We don't have to live it's under very one home. one-sided. I, I, I saw Beetle last summer, thought we were good. Uh, apparently not. I don't know. Like Zolak, like I, I, I talked to him last year. Uh, I think you know, they like, love. I think they have a lot of love for you. I think we're just there's some miscommunication. Um, or maybe just the need to catch up. Maybe. Mixed signals. I guess so. I, I did like that Zolak was like, I don't want to be the naughty mom. <laughs> <laughs> Zola's a man. Yeah. I don't know. I just, I, I don't know. I feel like there, there were some less, less on Zoe's side, more on Beatles' side. I feel like there were some unspoken things that he wanted to get off his chest in regards to me and my relationship to the show or the station. And it feels like an easy fix because he was wrong about most of the stuff that he was saying. 